How many of you have been in a group uh, and they're doing something untoward? Maybe they're drinking, uh, maybe they're smoking, maybe they're all going to go out tonight. Uh, and one of them turns to you and says, so, you coming with us? The whole group looks to you, or all eyes are on you for your response. Do you remember how you felt? Do you remember feeling like uh, you should, you should conform? And it's probably quite likely that you did, right? So I know I've been in hundreds of situations like this, and I've absolutely conformed. And, uh, but, but nowadays, I feel comfortable saying no, because I've come to realise that I do have a choice. So many of you may disagree with me, maybe you feel like, actually, no, you don't have a choice. Or maybe you feel like you do have a choice, but you just, you just can't express it. Well, this is where my acronym CAD is going to come in. Uh, I'm going to try and persuade you that actually, in these situations, you really do have a choice. We're going to talk about why peer pressure occurs, and how we can empower ourselves to become immune to this peer pressure. So you may be thinking, this guy's crazy, he's a nutter, but please, uh, hear me out. Firstly, we're going to define peer pressure. So according to Jacqueline Long's uh, Gale Encyclopedia of Psychology, she defines peer pressure to occur when an individual experiences open or covert persuasion to adopt the same values and behaviours as our identifying group. So in essence, uh, we're being influenced by others, we're being persuaded to do things we really don't feel like doing. She adds that this affects numerous life factors, such as school success, such as substance abuse, uh, such as the extent to which we conform to our social or, or gender roles. So what does happen when we do conform to somebody else's identity, to somebody else's actions or behaviours? Well, we, we lose our own identity, right? We lose our sense of self, we lose touch with our, who we are. This happens to billions of people every day all over the planet, and, and I, would, I, would, I would say this is a pandemic. So, what can we do to empower ourselves to be immune to this peer pressure? Well, this is where my acronym CAD comes in. So what is CAD? So the K in CAD is for know yourself. And I don't mean some deep philosophical question, you know, like, who am I? But, you know, to know generally, what, what do I enjoy doing? How do I like to carry myself? Uh, what are my intentions or goals? How much sleep do I like to have? Uh, am I somebody who likes to be kind to others? What do I enjoy doing? You know, what am I interested in? And once we decide these things about ourselves, uh, we can decide whether what somebody else is doing is right for us. Because ultimately, we must be doing things in every day that are best for us, right? So let me talk about a personal example in relation to some published work. So Sherwood Thompson in the Encyclopedia of Diversity and Social Justice talks about Anglo-conformity. Now this is research conducted on immigrants who have migrated to the United States who have felt like they've had to drop their own uh, cultures, their own sense of identity, and adopt the American way of life in order to fit in. And the argument is that they can have both. They can have both their own identity and culture, and they can fit in with the people around them. Take me for example. Uh, it's very easy for me to come over to America and, and put on an accent and act socially like those around me, but you know, I know myself. Uh, I know where I'm from and I, and I stay true to me. The A in CAD then is for awareness, awareness of how we feel. And this is based on the premise that we want to do things that make us feel good. And if something doesn't make us feel good, it's probably not best for us, right? So put simply, would you rather do something that makes you feel good or makes you feel not good? So that's, that's easy. Uh, so, if something doesn't align with what we now know about ourselves, it's, uh, it's not going to make us feel good, it's probably best to decline. That leads me to D, and that's to do something, do something about it. When faced with these peer pressure situations, we can actually remove ourselves from the situation, or we can just decline. We can say, oh, no thank you, I don't really feel like doing that right now, but I really appreciate the offer. Or we can excuse ourselves from the situation, we can say, look, I'm so sorry, but I promised my friend I'd have with her homework, you know, I really have to go. Is it easy? Uh, because ultimately we do have a choice. Let me illustrate my acronym with some published work uh, called Transcending the Group, Discovering Both Self and Public Spirit by Steve Redford. This research is based upon two famous protagonists from two different books in relation to Takio Doi's model of the Western Psyche. This model of the Western Psyche is based on the idea that we can find more meaningful relationships with others when we find solitude with the world around us when we stay true to ourselves, and when we become immune to peer pressure. So to summarise this point, I'm going to use a quote from Stargirl, the book, which is within the research. And it goes like this. The point is, in a group, everybody acts pretty much the same. That's kind of how the whole group holds itself together. That's what jails and mental hospitals are for. To keep it that way. You think I should be in jail, she said. I think you should try and be more like the rest of us, I said. So, what can we do to be more empowered, to be immune to peer pressure? Well, practice. This is something that we can use every single day, seven days a week, 
we can get better and better at it. So now let me ask you a question, and this is a rhetorical question, by the way. Wouldn't it just feel so great if we could feel like we can be immune to peer pressure? If we can be so confident in ourselves that we only behave in ways that make us feel good? I hope you've come to be now aware that this is not impossible. With my acronym CAD, know yourself, be aware of how you feel, and do something about it. Please, care about how you feel and how you carry yourself. Because this doesn't just affect you, this affects the people around you. When you say no to the group, you influence others. And not influence them to, influence them to act a certain way, but you inspire them to be more themselves. And that's absolutely what life's about. So I'll leave this point with a quote from Gandhi who says, be the change you want to see. So, to conclude, we now know what peer pressure is and how it commonly occurs. We now know my new acronym for Peer Pressure Immunity CAD. That's know yourself, be aware of how you feel and do something about it. I hope you can now see that when you stay true to who you are, you do not only yourself a favour, but the world and the others around you. I also hope you can agree that with a little practice and with a little knowledge about who you are, that you can be immune to peer pressure. And now I'll close with a quote from inspirational speaker, uh, Tony Robbins, who says, Knowing yourself is the beginning of all the wisdom. Thank you.